Okay, after that train wreck where uh, I had to go back and go through a few more um, time trials again, we're back. And uh, there's no gems here to get, so let's just go to Warframe 5. And this is also when we got all the gems in, so we just have to get all the relics. So, uh, hopefully this won't take too long, uh, but mm, we're getting there. So, yeah, one thing uh, I meant I, I said uh, when, when I went back through those levels is that the invincibility invincibility in this game is a lot shorter compared to the trilogy, which is kind of interesting. Like in those games, it it lasted for quite a while, but in this game, it really doesn't last that long at all, which is kind of weird, but whatever. Oh well. Just random stuff blowing up. Hmm. So what do you want to talk about now? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Oh, that bird destroyed the box for me. That's nice. Did we decide that n the next game we're recording after this is Mario Sunshine? Or... Well, I don't remember. I think, I think it was sunshine. Wait, can I jump over this? No. Ugh. Do you want to do uh, sunshine next? We could. Yeah. We're gonna do like a Sonic R next. Uh, but yeah, we we could I guess it's a really short game, so it'll take it would take like not probably not even an hour. I guess we can make that work. Do you have a Sonic use Sonic R as like a buffer between games? That was, that was a short level. Yeah, <laughs> kind of just bra blazed through. <laughs> Excuse me, blazed through that. Hmm. I'm trying to think what there is to discuss right now, because we've pretty much we pretty much just exhausted Smash Talk at this point. Um, just waiting for a new. We're just waiting for more new a new a news update. Pretty much, like this. If it were any other Smash game, we'd still have like a blog, like something like Sakurai would still be updating a site to give us new information. Yeah. Pick of the day. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, the thing with Smash Ultimate's uh, website is that the updates we saw never were never tell us anything. <laughs> yeah, they were they were never actually new things. Like they were just like. Um, they were just talking about the, like, the veterans and stuff we already knew about, and we never, we never got to hear anything new until we saw, like, a direct, so, yeah. <laughs> Ugly donkeys, man, like, what's wrong with their teeth? <laughs> yeah, right? Oh, gosh, what was I gonna say? Um, we, like, they would occasionally let a few interesting things slip, like, mm. there's character, I think it was character profile revealed uh, Delfino Plaza was coming back as a stage. Oh yeah, yeah that was like, um, it's, like, you, I remember, um, when the, um, it's like the first and only time we could get two invincibilities in a row, but like, when the website went live, it was like a game people had where they were just looking through the website and trying to s decipher like any stages they could they could find before we got like the full stage list 
and yeah. <laughs> and they did like say Luigi's new grab would involve a poltergust. Yeah, and that was like speculated a lot too. No picture though. <laughs> no picture though. Nope. And they said Ash Greninja would be part of Greninja's final smash, so. Yeah, I'm. Picture, just... but it was a neat update. Yeah, I thought like a lot of people did. Like, I thought it was gonna get an entirely new Final Smash, but it's literally just the same thing, but just with Ash Greninja. It's little... Honestly, what I was expecting, I was expecting to do that. Honestly, just yeah. Acknowledge the games that came out since then. Yeah, it's kind of a little bit disappointing though, because uh, yeah, would have would have been cool if they tried coming up with something new. I'm not sure, like, what does Ask Energy even do in the games proper? I don't know. I always assumed it was an anime exclusive thing. Um, it started in the anime, but they migrated it to the games shortly after. Okay. Um. What is wrong with this game? Like, the music just stopped, but I still had invin invincibility. Who knows? Okay, yeah, these levels go by much faster when you're just speeding through them. What the heck? Okay, now break that Aqua Aqua Cray, but don't get too crazy. Yeah. It's not like Crush Free where you get like super fast when you get invincibility. We have the pace of my glasses on these. Yeah. Screw it, I can take the damage. We're almost done anyway. Do, do, do. Okay. These are, you know, all honesty, these are these are worthy successors of the Arabian Nights levels. Oh uh, yeah, minus the uh, slow monkey bars. Yeah, I'd agree with that. They're not quite as tightly designed as those levels, but the this, as far as Rafa Cortex goes specifically, it's a, uh, it's a. Uh, Valiant effort. Damn, my faint phrase. <laughs> <sighs> it's hard. Like I, this game, this game has its merits, but when it all comes down to it, I again, like it just makes me wish I was playing the trilogy. Like this game doesn't really do anything that those games don't already do, but better. Really? I mean, I guess... I mean, I guess the back... The lack of backtracking is nice. Is nice, and the fact that every level has a unique theme, for the most part, is good too, but... That's not enough for... What the rest of the game... Has to put you through. So, I, I don't know. This game's like the it's... definition. This game's like the definition of a love, it, love it and or love it and hate it relationship for me. I wish Travis Tales had just been allowed to honestly as utterly in, as utterly what's the word unproductive? No. Uh, as I... not. What am I trying to say? It would never happen. But I wish Travis Tales had just been allowed to develop this on the PS One, which they were more familiar hmm. with at this point. Yeah, I, I feel like they'd be able to get more out of the- they- oops. For, I forgot what the level design was doing at that point, but um... The uh... Yeah, they, they'd probably be able to make the game a lot better if it was just PS1. Make- don't, don't have to worry too much about learning new hardware. But I think at this point it's more- it was just, it's like... People expected Crash to go to the ne uh, the the new console generation. Dang it! Keep did that again. Uh, no console generation, and we already had a bunch of Crash games on the PS One at that point. So I understand why they went to the PS Two or like this the sixth sixth generation, but they at least needed more time. I honestly would have preferred if they just stuck with the original design concept of, of the, the like the more open des uh, world design. Oh crap! Uh, open world design that they eventually stuck with with Twin Sanity, 
and just did that with this game as well because uh, like we've been like uh, I've been saying this whole time like the, this is basically just crash free but worse and uh, yeah <laughs> like uh, I mean yeah I would wish they I mean I wish Travis has been allowed to be a bit more ambitious but mm. janky and they're st and they're being traditional imagine if they had the same amount of time it had to make an open game. That's true, but at the same time, uh, I do. Well, the, the fact that Crash uh, Twin Sanity is uh, oh crap, didn't mean to do that. Uh, Twin Sanity is like more open ended, more open ended and stuff. Uh, it actually uh, is one of my favorite Crash games, um, like, and that's a big reason why. So I I, I don't know. I mean even uh, even with. Even with their, even with uh, Oxford Studio losing like half of their data, they still had more time to make a game than they did with Rapid Cortex. Really now? So wait, uh, they had more time to build Twin Sanity than Rapid Cortex. At least based on what was the what was the plan? They were what was the plan? They were going to have a longer development cycle than the Nuts for Division had for this game. Okay. If we're assuming that they started shortly after this game released, then lost their data around halfway through, so they had making assumptions that they got a full three years somehow. Huh. So when? Wait. When it's did this game? Thing. When did the did these two games come out? Um, like September or November two thousand one for Wrath of Cortex, and then like September two thousand four for Twin Sanity. Okay. All 2004 for Twin Sanity. Oh gosh. Oh, okay. I thought I I thought though I didn't think there were like three of those platforms in a row. Oh. But yeah. Hmm. Mm. Uh. But yeah, I'm operating under the assumption that's. Oxford Studio got <laughs> as soon as Rap Court is released, but hmm. it went down. Time to develop Twin Sanity than this division had for Raph. Yeah, and you I, said that this game had like, what, a year or so to de develop? Yes, they started hmm. development in 2000, like, probably sh around the time Crash Bass released. Okay. Huh. Even if they had gotten like just another six months, they'd probably be able to iron out a lot of the stuff. Yeah. But at least polish up the... Like, it's still gonna end up being a, a crash-free... I, I, I don't want to say a crash-free clone, but like, that's the easiest way I can describe it. Uh, but... Yeah, it would still have that... Dang it. It would still have to deal with that, uh... That being... Like the general skeleton of it, but it it, it would have been nice if it was more polished. I don't care. I, I'm I'm okay with it being derivative. I just want it to be better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's totally understandable. Because a uh, huge adventure, you can tell that it's directly like copying stuff from two and three, but it's done really well, and the level design is actually really well thought out. That. It doesn't really bother me that much in that game. And mainly grade Huge Adventure on a curve because it's actually pretty impressive for a handheld game that's trying that's to true, yeah. be like the Crash formula. It yeah, it's like um it it um tra uh, not Traveler's Tales, uh Vicarious Visions uh did a really did a really good job in emulating what uh, cr uh Crash should be like. Um, on the GBA, like, I mean, the thing with like two, the the fact that the game is all two D isn't, I mean, it's it's cool too, but it's not too impressive for the sense that um, uh, Cr Crush in its design is more like a two D game than a three D game, because um, you're basically going through a linear corridor and doing an, an obstacle course like you'd w you would in a two D game. But you're going forward and backwards as well. Um, it's just 
basically the same design mentality as a 2D game. But still. Now, uh, I wish that Vicarious Visions and GBA games had, you know, made more original music. <laughs> That's true. It's basically just remixes of the themes we already, already uh, established. One point for Traveler's Tales. That's true, yeah. Uh, and, oh crap. No! Oh, oh, I thought you could pull it off twice. I forgot about that. <laughs> Dang it. Yeah. But, um... Trance, the map theme is still great, though. <laughs> uh, what map theme? Entranced. Oh, okay. I've only... I think I've heard that one, but I'm not sure. Um... The yeah. Crash 3 Warp Room remix, but it's... Okay. Oh, yeah, I think I've heard it a little bit. Oops. I didn't mean to jump off. This stuff was taking me a while. But, um... Yeah, just... Hmm? What are you gonna say? Um... I was gonna say, um... Uh, yeah, point, point to Traveler's Tales, because uh, the... The music in... Uh, Rather Cortex and Twin Sanity are... Really good. The soundtrack for these two games is actually really good, I think. Gonna... Yeah, yeah suck that we didn't have like Josh Mansell anymore, but they they did the best for what... yeah they did the best for what they did have, and uh, Spiral Mouth doing like a full a cappella soundtrack is definitely unique. I wonder how that that like uh, that exactly went, uh, like trying to figure out how to like what kind of soundtrack should we get for Twin Sanity and. Oh no, let, let, let's make it all a cappella. Like, I wonder how that came to be. I think there's a, um, an, a, a, a interview on Crash Mania that explains some of that. I, okay. I might have to dig that up sometime. Hmm. Maybe there will be something to uh, look into for when we do Twin Sanity then. Oops. I don't know when we're going to do Twin Sanity, but... Um, I'm looking forward to doing that a lot more than this, so it'll probably be a lot. It'll probably be sooner than you think, but still got uh, still want to get through some other games before we do that. And hopefully, it doesn't have disc screw ups like this game did. Say it doesn't need disc screw ups to glitch out. You know this. That's true, but I want to at least have the game to load. I remember, like, in my C's run, like, when I, right when I loaded into, uh, the, the Academy, uh, level, Crash just disappeared. Like, oh, okay. Don't slow down. That. Oh. Just stupid e robot enemies. Like, but right when I went into the Academy of Evil, uh, Crash was just gone for, like, three minutes or something. So it was just some rat. All you could see for a little bit was just Crash's uh, Crash's shadow, just walk, uh, just walking about. <laughs> it was so, uh, like you don't even have to try to find glitches in that game; they just happen. <sighs> yeah, at least, at least the game like fundamentally is still enjoyable. So. Uh, I don't mind it too much. What's your breaking point when it comes to, uh, like, glitches? Like, how- wh where would- where do you generally draw the line and say, like, this is, um, like, this is, like, too- too much at this point, and it's, like, hindering my enjoyment, if you will? Is the when it's making it not making it just less beat a level properly without when, when it started properly. Mm. 
starts glitching out models so much that they look like Lovecraftian horrors. <laughs> Yeah, from like I, 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 for me, I generally draw the line with glitches when it's make, like it's making the game just not fun to play anymore, and like just making it borderline unplayable. But it, it, if it's some like something silly for like a couple seconds, it's I, I generally it generally just gets a little chuck out of me. I, I completely lost where I was going. Um, it, it gets a laugh out of me. Uh. And, uh, you know, if, it, if it's harmless, then, you know, it doesn't bother me that much. Like, if I have... Like, I'm more willing to accept glitches if, well, if they're not prevalent and... Yeah. They aren't, like, I... Like, basically, if I have to go out of my way to find them, then I'm probably gonna... I'm going to be a lot more forgiving. Yeah, it's that, and, um, if the, if the glitches I do find are harmless in the grand scheme of things. Like moon jumping and rise of work versus everything else in rise of work. Pretty much, yeah. Cause like moon, the moon jump thing, wait, you can't even do that anymore. But even then, that's something that you're blatantly doing on like on your own accord. So it's not really the game's fault that it's happening. And uh, I don't know. Crap! I'm trying to what? Oh. Um. Okay. I don't know what that was. But, um... Hmm. But how often I tolerate glitches, I guess, depends on how much I enjoy the game. Yeah, that, that that's also true, too. Like, um... It, it, it's a case-by-case -case basis, I guess, because games like... Oh, it's a... This is kind of a generic example, but like so Sonic 06, for instance, like it, the, it's a game that's already a chore to play, and uh, the, a lot, most of the time, the glitches just make it more painful with what a lot of them end up doing. Uh, so it just makes the experience worse than it already is. It makes it better, though. <laughs> I mean, in, it, some it, it it can make it funny sometimes. Um, it, it, it depends, really. So, sometimes a, a glitch, some, some of the glitches can be funny. Other times, it, they can be annoying. I hit the, uh, um, exclamation switch on your right. Oh, right. I can try and remember that, yeah. Uh. Dang it. Oh crap. Oh. Could have had that. Okay, oh, well, it's oh, just a life. It's just a life, but it's fine. Dang, there were actually gonna be time crates. Yeah, that would have been nice. Oops. No! I. Mm. I keep thinking I have to go left there for some reason. Watch it, one episode is just gonna be this one level. Has Xavier showed up, showed up yet? He said he's busy tonight. Oh, that's a shame. Oops. Okay, this is getting ridiculous. Is there anything we we can watch uh without uh Xavier? This level's giving me 
pains. We should totally watch that, uh, what should we call it? That lolly thing? I forgot the. Hey, without context, you're about to sound, you just sound creepy. Oh, yeah, mate. <laughs> I, I forgot the name of it. Just refer to it as the Hug Jim Show, because that's actually wholesome. Yeah, I guess so. I am actually, I do actually legitimately want to watch that because it does look kind of adorable. Enough of a backlog that we won't even get to it for another several years. <laughs> uh, we, I guess, the only thing I can think of is uh, we could watch uh, TMNT because Xavier's already watched the whole show, so we could just watch some episodes without him and it won't it won't really affect anything oh, we need a jason for that um he's up to season two so we can we can watch season one uh and it'll be fine i had no i i honestly had no idea the inv you could get invincibility with the mac oops ran out too fast Okay, don't go to the left this time. I don't know why I keep doing that. Uh. Okay. So I have an extra hit point, let's not waste it, please. Uh, come on. I can't see. This level goes on for quite a bit. Hmm. No. Uh. Man, I really don't blame uh, Ant Dude and Caddy for not bothering with the uh, with the side content in this game and getting the relics because, yeah. Uh, Yes, it, it, a lot of it is just not fun to do, really. You're most... For the most part, you're just better off just getting to Cortex and calling it a day. Oh, it's just a stuff. Okay, I'm saving. I, just, I don't want to do that again. <laughs> Cortex Vortex. So, would you be done with watching Ninja, uh, Ninja Turtles, or would you do you want to do something else? Uh, I don't know. It's how long this takes. Oh uh, yeah, we still got like five levels to do. <laughs> the ones we haven't seen before, so it's new content at least. But you know, some of them. Well, it's one. It's more like just one. One of the secret levels is just like the worst thing ever. But other than that, I don't remember them too well. A good sign. <laughs> well, we'll see what happens. I don't remember a lot of them being too hard. In before I spend like an hour on them. I hope not. I don't. I don't want to. I want this game to be done. <sighs> oh, okay.
No! Ah. Oh. Didn't mean to stop there. Messy. Is there anything we haven't discussed yet? Because we talked about like the art design and the music and the themes and all that. Um. Uh, what do you think about the enemies in this game? Because I could honestly think a lot of them are kind of just generic, to be quite honest. I don't know. That's when, I don't think I never, I don't think I ever saw enemy design as being Crash Bandicoot's strong suit. Hmm. Oh, I didn't even see the potion. A lot more lab assistance than usual. Yeah. Um, see, the thing, the thing with me is that, um, one of, uh, I feel like one of Crash 3's best, uh, f uh, best parts was the, uh, enemy design, or, like, all the different things the game, um, uh, does to make you avoid enemies and enemy attacks and whatnot. Um, I was like, yeah, like, the sword guys in the medieval levels, you have to watch out for this. The timing of their sword swings, uh, the the way the frogs like just jump towards you and stuff like that, and like I don't know, like stuff like the enemy design in Crash Free keep, keeps me engaged in that way. Um, whereas a lot of the enemies in this game uh, don't really offer that same kind of uh, challenge, I guess, or like mental. Excitement? I don't know how to explain it, but... A lot of them act the same way, in the sense that they're basically just randomly standing there and just throwing a projectile over and over, with uh, no real... No real threat half the time. Nitro crates are... usual, or is the problem? Yeah. More than usual, the Nitro Crates are probably the biggest threat to Crash. Yeah. The enemies in Twin Sanity can be pretty deadly sometimes, though. Like, even, uh, like, j even as early as the Papu Papu moves, for lack of a better, the, the tribesmen, I guess. Uh, the, the the guys with the sp spears can be pretty scary. So the, yeah, like the AI for the enemy seems a little more than usual. Uh, again, I'm guessing another casualty of the development time and a new mm. developer switch. Yeah. Then again, I, um, I, I, hmm. What are you gonna say? I was just gonna. Well, I was just gonna say like then again, uh, Crash One and Two. Uh, a lot of the enemies in that game did have like a pretty pretty basic pattern too. Um, like it, they. Tend to, tended to be difficult due to what the level design uh, is asking for you. Um, and in the Crash Crash 2's case, um, a, lot, a lot of the enemies just walked back and forth. And the only real challenge, the only real challenge like the enemies tended to have was uh, you had to do a specific maneuver, like you had to jump on this specific enemy or slide and stuff like that 
Um, so, like... Hmm, I don't know. Like, it, they're not all like that. Um, some of them did provide a good challenge. Um, one of my favourites is the bazooka enemies in some of the secret areas. Um, like, you had to watch out, like, time your jumps around the, uh, the, um, bullets, if you will, and stuff like that. And I like that. I don't know. Alright, secret walkthrough in time. Um, so, down. Down again. Force of nature, that's the one that sucks. <laughs> Same after every level, we're gonna load locked again. Hopefully not. Yeah, what's your? What, I I've talked about uh, like enemy design a lot, especially in my Crash Free playthrough. But like, what's your general p uh, feelings towards that in the series? I guess. I mean, they stop. Crash stops having consistent enemy design after well, clearly when they stop using lab assistance as a regular. Hmm. What happens if Coco gets hit by the wizard? Does she turn into a bat as well? That's a good question, actually. Hmm. I was I was more so asking about like uh, the enemy design, the in terms of like what what does it mean for, uh, as like a uh, obstacle? Like what do they what do they do to try and hinder you, if you will? Oh, well that's fair. Okay, I guess I have to oh. die. I guess I never really put much thought into it, but it <laughs> served their purpose, I guess. Um, yeah, I Crash think... One's enemies are more often threatening because you're locked in a well, tight corridor, corridor. Yeah, it goes back to the whole thing of, like, the reason the threatening is due to the circumstances and level design. Okay, this is just just quick aside thing. Uh, this is the, as far as I know, uh, remember... This is the only level that has a secret gem, like, in the main path that you have to find. Which is kind of interesting. That's because the level itself is secret, I guess it's not that counted. That's yeah. Enough. I kind of like that. I kind of like that, uh, actually. It's more, more like... Oh. Yeah, kind of surprised more... ...do that. Yeah, um, like, if they... Vicarious Vision. Insanity did. Hmm. Well, te technically, yeah, but the way the virtue of just having gems be like common collectibles now. Yeah. But like, if the Vicarious Visions make like a Crash Four, like their own Crash Four, like just a new game in general, I would like, like have, like every every level would uh, having like a secondary gem would be pretty cool. Like it. it like, if a level doesn't have a death route or a, or a colored gem path, it would be nice if they just made it a secret, uh, you, f you find, like, a secret gem somewhere. Um, I think that would be pretty cool. I, okay. What happened? I, apparently there, there's just nitros back there. I thought there was a, I thought it was just a normal box. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I'd, I'd enjoy that. I can't see. Ah. Okay. One mess up and you screwed. No. Uh, oh there. Okay. Oh, oh, that's just that's not fair. At least we know. At least we got all the boxes. 
There's no bonus room here, that's odd. It's a violet. <laughs> Okay, that's nice show. Not oh, you know what? Oh, dang. I missed when they like, spawned the wizards and they just actually disappeared into the dust. <laughs> yeah. So oh, man. Wait, now it's. Oops. But yeah, it's, it's fine, though. Uh, I, I, I feel like I'm, like, the only person who's really properly thought about enemy design in this series. I mean, there's probably someone else, but I, I, I never really, I don't really hear people talk about it, like, at all. I'm sorry, those, those are both clear gems, but they look like they were cut differently. Hmm. Maybe. I should probably go back and save. Uh. Alright, we're not in loading screen purgatory yet. They look like you're traveling through a VR tunnel itself, like imagining that this is a VR system within a VR system now. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. I do like the little, uh, I, I do like the effects when you go through the, through through that area. Right, uh, we might as well just get this out of the way, just get the relics done at a time. <laughs> 